Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Trevor Williams of Palm Praise Ministries, and we are located on Atlantis Plaza, Denby, Maple, and Clarendon, Jamaica, West Indies. I give God thanks today for the opportunity with which He has blessed me so that I can share His Word with you. I trust that you will receive His Word joyfully. I've been sharing on the fruit of the Spirit, evidence of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And I want, I'm making the point that one cannot assess the Spirit by operations. Demons, deceiving spirits, and spirits that impersonate God perform miracles and they prophesy and they influence people. They speak in tongues, they shout, they make noise, they carry on. You cannot use that to assess the spirit. You will, you will receive those spirits and as if they are the Holy Spirit when you really intended to receive God, the Holy Spirit. So how do we know, how does one know when a person comes to you with the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit and not in the control and influence of evil spirits? Because evil spirits do all of that. They dance, they preach, they pray, they pray longer than you and find the words. They praise God. <laughs> Right? They slay people and carry on. <clears throat> How does one know when it is the Holy Spirit and, when, and, and not unclean spirit? Or when does one know? How does one know when it is an unclean spirit or, a, or an unclean force carrying a person and not the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is the standard by which we assess the Spirit. So I've started out on love. I've looked at love and joy. I know we are in peace, the fruit of the Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, I am a servant whom you have called, whom you, you have anointed, to share a word at such a time as this. I give myself to you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray you equip me. Lord Jesus, I pray you grant me your deliverance. I pray you empower me. I pray you lead me in paths of righteousness and holiness. Even though as I'm about to break a word to your people, I pray, Lord, you break a word through me. I pray, Lord, Lord that some hearts will be touched and blessed. People, Lord, will be equipped, some, Lord, to hear your word. As they hear your word, they'll be equipped, some, Lord, to and become more effective in ministry. We are living in a dangerous age. Some Lord and demons and Satan, they are fooling people, mixing up believers. We are living in a dangerous age, but Lord, I am about to share a word. I pray you share it through me. I give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the control. I need to share a word. Amen. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. And the person who is under the operation of the Holy Spirit must display these characteristics. Love. Love is not selfish. Love is not self-seeking. If the preacher comes to you telling about God and afterward he wants to take you home or to come home with you to sleep with you as a female or as a male, you'll know there and then that this person is not operating in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter if the person has healed you. <coughs> Demons fake healing. They speak in tongues, they prophesy. They do that. It doesn't matter if the person has slain you. If the person is seeking to abuse you or use you, then that tells you that the spirit by which the person is operating is false. The person <coughs> who is operating in the Holy Spirit will have the peace of God. The peace of God that passes all, all understanding. It is, it is that peace that works in the, uh, by the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, with which we are concerned. The peace given by 
the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's long lasting. It, it, it is life transforming. So long as you continue to walk in the Spirit and live in the Holy Spirit, you will take on the character of the Holy Spirit. If you are living in demons and controlled by demons, you are going to take on the character of demons and Satan. If you are living in the Holy Spirit, you are going to take on the character of the Holy Spirit. We are looking at the inward work of the Holy Spirit, that his work produces the character of God or the fruit of God in us. That's what he does. I ask the Holy Spirit daily to keep the sin nature in me crucified and inoperative, the sin nature. Because the, the believer faces a battle on three fronts. Same battle, three fronts. The believer faces a battle that is known as a sin nature. The sin nature is that which we have inherited from Adam. Some refer to it as the Adamic nature. We have that in us. The Bible says it was crucified when Christ died. But you know, yes, Christ did all this at Calvary. But we do have a role to play. We have to implement the work of Calvary. On a daily basis, we have to implement it. We have to imp implement the work of Calvary upon Satan daily. You notice Satan has not been wiped out. Even though Christ died on the cross, he has not been wiped out. The Bible says he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's the New Testament. So he's not wiped out. But we have been provided the wherewithal to keep him crushed and defeated. We must understand that. We have been provided also the wherewithal to keep the sinners crucified. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And in life I don't live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The sin nature has to be kept inoperative. It has to be kept crucified in order for us to walk in the Spirit. If the flesh is reigning, and it is in control. The Holy Spirit is not in control. The Holy Spirit is in a corner. And from that corner, you will not be able to do the works of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of power in the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the executor in the Godhead. He puts things into force. He puts things in place. Is the executor. The Holy Spirit makes things happen. And so once we are submitted to him and we are walking in the Holy Spirit, we will live righteously and holily. Yes, the character of God will be reproduced in us and they will become a part of us. So when the Lord Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit being of the same quality as himself, he is here ascribing to the Holy Spirit the quality of deity. Deity meaning God, the Supreme One. So the Father is deity, the, the Son, Jesus Christ, is deity, and the Holy Spirit is deity. Now three gods, one God, three personalities, and of the three personalities, the Lord Jesus is the visible one. You will, when you see Jesus, you see the Father. That's what he said to Philip. You will not see the Father apart from the Lord Jesus. You will not see the Holy Spirit apart from the Lord Jesus. When you see the Lord Jesus, you see Almighty God. And if the Holy Spirit is at work in you, it is the Father and the Son at work in you. The, it is one God. Jesus is a visible person of the invisible God. So the Father is deity, the, the Son is deity, and the Holy Spirit is deity. He he is declaring, Jesus Christ is declaring that the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. I am going away and I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper or paraclete helper of the same quality, same level, standard, same level to help you and empower you 
that is the Holy Spirit. The believer has to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a source of power in the Godhead. So it is not something far-fetched for the believer to be empowered. The Holy Spirit is a source of power and the executor in the Godhead. Philippians 4, 7, I remember that the book of Philippians was written from prison. The Apostle Paul was in prison and he was facing certain deaths and knew. But he was able to talk about joy. He was able to talk about being joyful. He was able to talk about peace. The peace of God that passes understanding. So here in Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding. People cannot understand how we say to you have this peace. Even though circumstances are at the worst. Even though things are not going the way you would like them to go. Even though you are under attack. How is it you have this peace? You know, when you trust God, you know you have peace. At the present time, I'm renovating my house. It is in, the, the process is in, the work is in three phases. And the, the, the gentleman had it in one. I told him to separate them. And he carefully and skillfully transferred the workmanship on the first phase. Now he's on the second phase. And he wants money, but I'm working with the estimate. We have exceeded the ex estimate, and he realizes that there's no money for him to get. And he has left the work in, you don't know, shambles. He doesn't want to finish it. There was a time when I would be worked up. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I would be, you know, distressed. But, you know, it's amazing. God has given me a peace. I don't have to work and walk and curse and tell everybody. I'm just taking it in strides. I don't know what how the end um, will be, what the end will be, but I'm trusting God. We're talking about a peace that passes understanding. It's a peace that comes from a life that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Peace, the peace of God. It transcends all understanding. It transcends all knowledge. This peace will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It is good to know that God is in control. And when we can be at a place where we give a matter to the Lord, we can give the battle to the Lord. As the Bible says, the battle is the Lord's. <clears throat> the battle you have to face is God's battle. And I am realizing the battle that I face is God's battle. So I give it to the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. The battle, see the battle, your battle. The challenges as God challenges. God is all powerful and in the process is training us. In the process, he wants us to know him. He is revealing himself to us in the process. In the process, he is um, securing our victory. They understand that. And we are, what we are learning from the process, we'll be able to help others. We'll be able to guide others when we see them going through their valley of the shadow of death. We go through that, you know, the valley of the shadow of death. Not everybody at the same time. God knows when to allow you to go through it. Because we, we are going to be tested. We will be tested by Him. He doesn't put us all through it at the same time. Because some of us are not yet prepared for it. Some not yet prepared. But we are going to go through it. The psalmist says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, which mean really means your word and prayer, uh -huh. they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Yes, praise the Lord. That's the peace of God, because God is in charge. You, you give the matter to him. You pray to him, call on his name. Don't argue. Don't get into couscous and cascas. Don't get into that. God is in control. Give it to him. Let him deal with it. The Almighty God is able and is, is watching to see how you're going to handle that situation. How well you are handling it. And when you give it to him, don't take it back. 
When you give it to him, allow him to handle it. He knows what to do. So as a result of receiving Christ as our Savior, we now have peace with God. Notice the difference. We have been talking about the peace of God. It's an inner peace. Now we're talking about peace with God. This is a relationship peace. We are no more in hostility with God. Know that we have received the Lord Jesus as our Savior. We are no longer in hostility and confrontation and we are at war with God. We are at peace with Him. With Him. Peace. Relationship. Peace with God enables us to experience the peace of God. When we have peace with God, we can experience the peace of God. The past is understanding. We know that God is on our side. God is good. And God is love. God is kind. And God is all powerful. And God is on your side. You will not go under. And even if you end up in prison like Joseph, on the basis of a lie, it is to achieve some great purpose. God took Joseph out of prison and from prison to the palace. We have to understand that the experiences we are having are meant to take us to that promised land. God is taking us someplace. God is at work. <clears throat> There's meaning and purpose for your suffering and struggles. There's meaning to it. You are not on your own. You are not left alone. There is some purpose in it. And God is taking us someplace. Mm -hmm. So the peace of God passes understanding. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. As you place your trust in Him. The God of hope. God is our hope. We have no hope without Him. We have no future without Him. The song says, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fears are gone. Because he lives. Because he lives. So the God of hope, the God of the future, the God who determines my future, the God who knew me from before the foundation of the world, the God who knew me from before I was formed in my mother's belly, had made my spirit way back then, trillions of years ago. <clears throat> and he waited until the zygote was formed in my mother's belly. He put that spirit in this zygote. That God is in control. That God is a God of purpose. So I exist for God's purpose. You exist for God's purpose. So put your trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. As you place your trust in Him. The songwriter says it is sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Him at His word. Just to rest upon His promise. Just to know thus saith the Lord. It's sweet to trust in Jesus. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is Romans 15, 13. You will overflow. There will be an overflow in your life. Overflow of blessing. Overflow of peace and contentment, overflow of joy and happiness, an overflow of, you know, wealth, an overflow of God's grace and fragrance. You're you are you are experiencing transformation. You are not the same cry cry baby, and baby that you know you was a curse and quarrel. You know you're not the same war boat as one time. You you have peace. The God of peace is living in you and has transformed your life. The God of peace is with you and you will not go under. You are resting assured of the God of peace. According to the Bible, the peace of God which transcends all understanding is the harmony and calmness of body, soul and spirit that supersedes earthly circumstances. Yes, that calm, that harmony and calm of body, soul, and spirit supersedes all earthly circumstances, circumstances of threat, circumstances of neglect. 
If I didn't have this peace, I don't know how I would manage, how I would survive. Satan has, I mean, a deliverance ministry. And Satan has seen to it that all his customers, and some of, some of them I once held as my friends, but they have turned out to be customers of Satan. Satan has seen to it that he has turned all his customers against you. Customers is customers in the church. And his customers outside of the church. He has turned them all against me. If you are in a deliverance ministry, you are going to experience that. People hate you for nothing. People reject you. Laugh at you. Right? Uh, shrug you off. Pass you a door. Tell you how to do. Scold you. Nearly all of the letters of Paul start with the praise, grace and peace to you from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. It was, a, it was going through rough times. But he had come to know the grace and peace of God. Grace means God's favor, divine favor. It means that which God is doing for you that you don't deserve. You don't deserve his goodness, but he gives you. We don't deserve his kindness. We don't deserve his blessings, but he blesses us. Yes. So it says grace. It, it speaks of power. You are empowered by his grace. Because he's giving you that which you don't deserve. It has to do with power too. His wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, his care, his protection. Expand grace. He's giving you that which you don't deserve, that which you don't have, that which you can't afford. Grace and peace. You're going through it, but you're going through it with a peace. I can uh, just visualize Micaiah standing in the courts or the court of the king. King Jehoshaphat, a righteous king, right to a point, had come to visit King Ahab, a backslidden king. And the Bible says there was no king before him who had sold himself to do wickedness and evil as King Ahab. King Ahab was sitting on his throne and Jehoshaphat was sitting on a throne in the robes and Ahab had suggested to Jehoshaphat that they would go he would if ask him to go to war with him he needed to go and take um, a, a, a pass of land from the enemy well Jehoshaphat said yes I'll go with you but first inquire of the Lord so Ahab gathered up all his 400 prophets up there because Elijah had killed 850 of them. So he, and he had gathered more around him because they couldn't live without the prophets around them. And the prophets were dressed up and they had the horns and they were prophesying, go to Ramoth, Gilead and prosper. The Lord will give it in your hands. And they were false prophets. But they were saying, the Lord. And that's what causes people to go astray, you know. People come and say, the Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says, and they believe. Because the demonic forces are way to use fear and people. They believe that the Lord says it. Go to Ramoth, Gilead, and prosper, the prophets were all saying. The Lord has given it in your hands. King, and that pleased Ahab, the bastard king. It didn't please Jehoshaphat, who had some contact with God. So he said, isn't there a prophet of the Lord of who we may inquire? Ahab said, yes, there's still another prophet. But I hate him. <laughs> because he has never prophesied anything nice to me. He's always rebuking me and pronouncing judgment. He carefully did not mention Elijah. The king, Joseph had said, Don't, the king should not say that. So Ahab sent for him. And he told Ahab the truth. Ahab said, listen, you take this man back to where you brought, you took him from and um, lock him up. He had, had put him in prison. You know, and feed him with nothing but bread of affliction and water of affliction until he return in peace. He said, if you return in peace, God has not spoken by me. And then he said, people take heed. God is about to cut down Ahab in realm of Gilead. 
God is about to kill him. You, you could see he was going to prison, but he was saying, God. He was being sent back to prison. And oh, his dad was going to be bread of affliction and water of affliction. But the peace of God, because when you know who you are and who God really is, you don't have to worry. Because when the body is destroyed, the spirit is still alive and it goes to a place of peace and rest. You don't have anything to lose. You do what God tells you to do. You do it. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout scripture, we find that peace is defined as a blessing from God and harmonious with his character. Peace is a blessing from God. <laughs> and is harmonious with his character, with the character of God. Peace. So if you are in the control of the Holy Spirit, you are going to share the characteristics of God. Harmony. Peace. You don't have to get worked up. You don't have to shout. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Huh? Yes, the peace of God passes understanding. And it is going to keep you. It is able to keep you. And it will keep you. The God of peace, the Bible says. God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the apostle speaks of peace in this way. The peace of God can be described as a tranquil state of appreciation and faith when we submit to and trust the word of God and Christ. That's it. Once you have trusted God, when you embrace his word, you internalize his word, his word becomes a part of you. You experience a peace. You, the situation is here, you know, staring you in the face. It seems as if you are in trouble. Trouble. Having the peace of God doesn't solve the problem just yet. It is there. But you're, uh, you have a peace with you. For you know that God is in control. You are trusting God to work. You don't know how he's going to do it. You don't know how soon, but God is never late. You'll never be late. And you might end up in prison. But be assured that as night follows the day, God is going to turn up. He has a plan. He's going to turn up. Mm -hmm. So, just be easy in the Lord. Just be easy in the Lord. Appreciate what God is doing in your life. Appreciate the transformation taking place in your life. Appreciate. At times you don't even realize the transformation and the change until sometimes after. Sometimes after. But it is good when we can recognize it and spot and really praise God. It requires a mixture of humility and courage to experience God's peace. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't we be humble when we're dealing with God? God's God is Almighty God. Yet it requires a mixture of humility and courage to experience God's peace, seeking beyond the mere abilities of our own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, the writer Proverbs says, Proverbs 3, verses 4 and 5. In all your ways acknowledge God and God will direct your path. I'm speaking to persons who are having certain situations at hand, painful situations. Situations that you wish you didn't have. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and God shall direct their paths. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege to share your word. Even though, Lord Jesus, I pray your blessings upon your people, upon those who listen to your word, your blessings. I pray your blessing, radio station. 
Pray, Lord, you provide for the right decision. Pray, bless me and strengthen me as I share your word. In your precious name I pray, amen. Praise God. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Praise God.